Good day everyone. Our topic for today is all about solving direct variation. So let's start. Now we're done sa concept ng direct variation. Kung gusto mong balikan, ilalagay ko yung link dun sa description ng video na to. Let's have the solution for number one. Here's the question. If m varies directly as n and m is equal to 10 when n is equal to 5, find m when n is equal to 7. So, meron tayong dalawang methods na gagamitin pag solve ng direct variation. So, method number 1 is yung paggamit ng direct variation equation. So, una, m varies directly as n, it follows that m is equal to k times n. Next, yung ating unang value ng m at saka ng n, we have m is equal to 10 when n is equal to 5. Isa substitute natin yung value ng m and value ng n para makuha yung value ng k o yung constant of variation. So, we have 10 is equal to k times 5. Divide both sides by 5. We get k is equal to 2. Now, ito na yung ating constant of variation. Ang gagawin natin, isa substitute natin yung value ng k dun sa ating direct variation equation. So, we have m is equal to 2 times n or 2n. Now, to solve for m, ang gagawin natin dito, find m when n is equal to 7. Isa substitute natin yung value ng n dun sa ating equation to solve for the value of m. So, we have m is equal to 2 times 7, or simply 2 times 7 is equal to 14, and we're done. Now, yung second method natin, hindi na natin kukuhanin yung constant of variation. So, let's start. Method number 2. Suppose meron tayong dalawang values for m and n. We have m1 and m2, and n1, n2. Next, solve na agad natin yung value ng k, yung constant of variation, so, dun sa unang equation, divide natin both side by n sub 1. So, we get m sub 1 all over n sub 1 is equal to k. Dun sa ating pangalawang equation, divide both side by n sub 2. So, we have m sub 2 all over n sub 2 is equal to the value of k. Now, since pare silang equal sa k, it follows that m1 over n1 is equal to m2 over n2. Yung m1 and n1, sila yung unang values for m and n. Yung m2 saka yung n2, sila yung pangalawang values na ibinigay. And usually, dito yung mayroong isang blanco. Okay, so let's apply. So we use m1 over n1 is equal to m2 over n2. So yung unang value na ibinigay para sa m and n. So yun yung 10 and 5. So we have 10 over 5 is equal to find m when n is equal to 7. So m yung nawawala all over 7. Now, simplify na lang natin to. We have 10 over 5 or simply 2 is equal to m over 7. Now, cross multiply, we get m is equal to 14. And since we get the same answer, therefore, we're done. Now, let's move on to number 2. Method number 1, again, gagamit tayo ng direct variation equation. So, we have if y varies directly as x, it follows that y is equal to k times x. Ito yung ating direct variation equation. Now, to solve for the value of k or the constant of variation, kailangan natin ng dalawang value for x and y. Yung pangalawang sentence, ang sabi ay when y is equal to 12, x is equal to 2. So, ipalit muna natin yon. y is equal to 12 and x is equal to 2. Now, solve for the value of k, divide both sides by 2, we get k is equal to 6. Now, anong gagawin sa 6? Ipapalit natin dun sa ating direct variation equation. So, this becomes y is equal to 6 times x. Now, yung last sentence sa ating question is what is x when y is equal to 15? So, yung y yung papalitan para makuha natin yung variable x. So, we have y becomes 15 is equal to 6 times x. Now, divide both sides by 6. We get 15 over 6 is equal to x. Next, kailangan palagi nakasimplify pa yung ating fraction. Divide natin by 3 yung numerator and denominator or lowest term natin and we get 5 over 2. Therefore, the value of x is equal to 5 over 2 and we're done. Next, for the second method, ang gagawin natin since y and x yung given natin, we have y sub 1 over x sub 1 is equal to y sub 2 over x sub 2. Okay? Now, substitute na natin yung mga values na meron tayo. We have yung y sub 1, x sub 1. We have 12 over 2 is equal to yung y natin is 15. Ito yung y sub 2, 15 over x. Kasi yun yung nawawala. Cross multiply na lang tayo. 
we get 12 times x is 12x, 2 times 5 is equal to 15. Now, to solve for the value of x, divide both sides by 12. We get 30 all over 12. Now, simplify our lowest term, we get x is equal to 5 over 2. Therefore, we're done. So, obviously, dapat magkamukay mo kuha mong sagot dun sa method number 1 at saka sa method number 2. Now, let's move on to question number 3. If y varies directly as the square of x, when y is equal to 100, x is equal to 2. What is x when y is equal to 900? Now, method number 1, gagamitin natin yung direct variation equation. We have y is equal to k times x squared. Kasi, y varies directly as the square of x. Kaya siya x squared. Okay? Now, when y is equal to 100, x is equal to 2. Substitute natin. We get 100 is equal to k times 2 squared. Simplify natin. We have 100 is equal to 4k. Divide both sides by 4. Para makuha yung k, we get 25 is equal to k. Ito yung ating constant of variation. Next, ipapalit natin dun sa ating direct variation equation, we get y is equal to 25x squared. Next, pwede natin makuha yung value ng x. substitute lang natin yung value ng y na 900. So, we got 900 is equal to 25x squared. I-divide natin both side by 25. We get 36 is equal to x squared. Now, to solve for the value of x, kunin natin yung square root both side. We get x is equal to positive or negative 6. Because yung square root ng 36 is equal to positive and negative 6. And we're done. Now, for our second method, we get y sub 1 all over x sub 1 squared is equal to y sub 2 all over x sub 2 squared. Ganun lang din naman. Nagkaroon lang naman yung squared yung denominator. Okay? Isasusit na natin lahat ng values na meron. So, yung unang value ng x and y, we have y is equal to 100 and x equal to 2. So, 100 all over 2 squared is equal to yung second value ng y is 900 all over x squared. Kasi yun yung nawawala. Next, cross multiply natin. We get 100x squared is equal to, this is 4 times 900, we get 3600. Now, divide both sides by 100, we get x squared is equal to 36. Now, square root again both sides, we get x is equal to positive or negative 6. Therefore, we're done. Now, let's have another example. Meron pa tayong dalawang natitira. Okay, so let us answer number 1. Ito yung question, the weight of an object on earth varies directly as the weight on the same object on the moon. A 30-pound object would weigh 48 pounds on the moon. The question is, how much would a 65-pound object weigh on the moon? First thing to do ay intindihin mabuti yung question, basahin mabuti, at kailangang makagawa tayo ng direct variation equation. So, basahin natin. The weight of an object on earth varies directly. So, ito ay varies directly as the weight of the same object on the moon. So, we have the weight of an object on earth. So, we have W sub E is equal to K times or simply varies directly as the weight of the same object on the moon. So, we have W sub M or weight on the moon. Now, yung unang given natin, yung 300 pound object on earth would weigh 48 pounds on the moon. So, ipalit natin. We have 300 is equal to K times 48. Now, to solve for the constant of variation, i-divide natin by 48 both sides. So, we get 300 divided by 48. Then, simplify natin. We get 25 over 4. So, ito yung value ng ating K. Now, anong gagawin natin sa value ng K? Ipapalit natin dun sa ating direct variation equation. So, we have W sub E or yung weight on earth is equal to 25 over 4 times W sub M or yung weight on the moon. Now, pwede natin sagutan yung question, how much would a 65 pound object weigh on the moon? So, saan ba tong 65 pounds? Ito yung weight on earth. So, ipapalit natin dun sa weight on earth. So, we have 65 is equal to 25 over 4 times W sub M or yung weight on the moon. Next, cross-multiply natin. Ito ay 65 over 1. 
So cross multiply natin, we get 65 times 4 or simply 260 is equal to 25 times W sub M. Now, i-divide natin both side by 25. We get 260 all over 25 is equal to W sub M o yung weight on the moon. Simplify pa natin or lowest term. So we get the weight of that object on the moon is equal to 52 over 5 pounds or simply 10.4 pounds and we're done now let's move on to the second example the cost of a pizza varies directly as the square of its radius if a pizza with a six inches radius costs 105 pesos how much should a pizza with an 11 inches radius cost okay so ito yung mga kailangan natin hanapin na mga clues yung word na varies directly. Pag nakita tayo ng varies directly, automatic ito ay direct variation. Okay? So, gawa tayo ng equation. So, we have the cost of the pizza. We have C is equal to K times R squared. The cost of the pizza varies directly as the square of its radius. Okay? Next, if a pizza with a 6 inches radius cost 105 pesos, so yung radius natin ay 6 yung ating cost is 105. So, we get 105 is equal to k times 6 squared. Simplify lang natin para makuha natin yung constant of variation. So, we get 105 all over yung 6 squared is equal to 36. So, 105 over 36. Simplify pa natin, we get 35 over 12. Now, anong gagawin dun sa 35 over 12? Ipapalit natin dun sa ating direct variation equation. So, we get C is equal to 35 over 12 times R squared. Now, masasagot na natin yung question, How much should a pizza with an 11 inches radius cost? So, yung radius natin is 11 inches. Palitan natin. We have C is equal to 35 over 12 times 11 squared. Now, 11 squared is equal to 121. So, lagyan natin ng over 1. Para ma-multiply natin yung fraction. We have C is equal to 35 times 121, we get 4,235 all over 12. Approximately, the cost of the pizza with an 11 inches radius is equivalent to 352.92 pesos. And we're done.